Hey everyone, it's Desiree and I am here with Spellbinders once again and this club kit that we're going to show is the Amazing Paper Grace. Um, don't know how she comes up with all of these ideas. It's absolutely awesome. So this here is one of another 3D vignette um, and it's called the Garden Geek. Um, so you get all of these awesome dies, um, which will, of course, help you to create that vignette. Now, I'm not going to create a vignette this time. I'm going to do something just a little bit different. Um, and then, of course, this is the card that you will get. Mine's in paper copy, um, being on the inspiration team. And then, of course, the front of it. So you always get your inspiration. Okay, so let's get started. Now, I've already taken care of die cutting. Um, because that's just what we have to do. So I've cut three of the front gate. I've cut three of the arch, a multiple of the leaves in two different colors, a ton of the little tiny flowers, the hinges and lock. And then I also have my sign, the brad and two jump rings. And the word that I used for my hanging plaque is memories. So I used that from the clear stamp set. Um, and that's just what it's called, clear stamps. We can create our own sentiments with this. I think this is a great and versatile stamp set to have in your stash. Okay, so where I want to start actually, and of course I grabbed everything else but that, I want to grab a piece of cardstock um, and I want to do some blending so I'm just gonna move these little tiny cups and these die cut pieces out of the way let's see here I'm gonna grab a piece of scratch paper and I think I want yeah I do I want to do my ink blending with my oxides and we will grab two for green okay so let's start with the green now this is just going to be very general um, ink blending and oh my god I just put my green on my blue that's okay so I'm just going to clean it And pray I get that off. That's how I clean my brushes. Yep, starting off awesome. Okay, so I'm not looking for any lines to be exact here. Um, I'm just looking to get color down. Now, I do feel that oxides are great for this. Um, I do think that they you can get... A better coverage and you can do a quicker blend all right so there's the light I just want to take one of these to yep now I'm gonna come in with the darker shade I'm using peeled paint for that and I'm just gonna come in underneath and I want a different shade to come in as well On something just a little bit darker so let me dig yes we are gonna go with rustic wilderness and I just want that along the bottom just coming up just a little bit All right, so we have that little bit of gradient. Now we're going to turn this to the other side. I'm also gonna turn my scrap so I don't pick up any of that green. And I am going to grab just a piece of paper towel so that I can hold this in place without it getting all over my hands because that is what I do. Okay. 
Again, I'm going to start with my lighter shade. Let's see if I can wipe out that green. If not, I'm actually going to be coming down into this. So I'm going to get a little bit of green in that blend, which I'm okay with. And I'm just going to bring this up. You can see I am not worried about the perfect blend when it comes to the blue because that just gives the illusion of clouds. All right, now I'm just going to come in with a little bit of broken china. Not too much. Oops. But again, it just gives that variation, that variation going in, and now just a touch, a small touch of faded jeans up here. And we're just gonna blend, 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 blend. Okay. That's all the blending I'm doing. So that is our back panel. Now I am going to cut this. I believe these are, yeah. Now I'm actually, I think I'm gonna keep this. This was something that I was toying with, you know, around in my brain here. Hang on there, guys, because I'm going to be putting this onto a standard A2 size card. And I want to make sure that this fits. And yes, it will. Okay. So we are going to do some trimming. Now, the first thing that I want to do is I want to glue these layers together. So we've got lots of glowing here. I should have done this before, but that's okay. This will go quick. And again, on the smaller areas, I'm just putting little tiny dots every so often. Don't need to cover each of the spots. Gives it just a whimsical look. I'm gonna put that one down first. And now we've got our next layer. We're going to go through and these pieces are very easy um, to put together. Okay, I'll look at that there. And I'm not worried if they're perfect or not, because there's going to be all of this greenery that's going to come across. Now for these, the bottom gate, I want to cut the side pieces, the tabs here. Those are used for the vignette um, piece, if you, would, if you would be creating that. I am also going to cut, eventually, I'm gonna be cutting off these bottoms. But I'm just going to focus in on the sides. And I'm missing one. Oh. <laughs> Guys, it's been a long day. Oh my goodness. Of course, this piece would like jump out in front of you. And then one last one here. And then I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to get these layered as well. And 
Okay, here we go. And again, just focusing on the, the big areas and for these little areas, you know, just adding some dots for those. And one more. <clears throat> Okay, so now we have that. So this is going to sit right on that edge. Now, you could also keep those feet there. I mean, why not? It would just have your card sitting up more. You could also, if you wanted to, set this here and have this piece come off the top because then you could have a flourish that comes off of that. So it's whatever you want to do. Just because I'm sticking with a four and a quarter by five and a half, again, it doesn't mean you can't go outside of those parameters um, to create an illusion or to create a scene. So just remember that. Sometimes we get so bottled up to think, oh, I, 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 got, I got to stay in beside this. No. You know, and, and I do too, you know, I sit there and I'm like, okay, I can't do this. Um, can't go outside these areas. It won't look right. Trust me, it will. Now I am going to take this and I'm going to go off the bottom of the panel and I'm going to center this. And I'm going to place that down. Now I know you're thinking, oh God, Gray, why did she choose Gary? Okay, now what I am gonna do here though, I am going to go right up underneath this and cut off these ends because I want this to just sit right on top of that. And again, it's gonna come off the top as well and I am okay with that too. So I'm gonna put some glue down on this Again, hitting those spots to get those fine details to stay down. And then we're going to push. Now I'm going to flip this over and wipe that glue away. Okay. Now, there's one more thing that I need to do to this because as I said, people are probably looking at that and going, oh my God, great. It's okay. <laughs> it's totally, totally all right. So let me get those two things that I need and I will be right back.
Okay, so what I want to do here, I have a mixture here of white gesso and some of my shimmer watercolor. Again, just add a little bit to this. And you know what? I think I want to change my brush. I want a, um, a hog type brush, something that's really firm. I'll be right back. Okay, so I'm going to use one of my acrylic, you can see, I mean, it's it's just really, really stiff. So I almost want to stipple this on. Now I'm just going to swipe up. And you guys are probably saying, well, why didn't you do this before you put it on there? Because I'm okay if this gets onto the background. It's just going to add to the details of it. And again, I'm really, I want to use this as a stipple. And when this dries, even though I've got that white gesso, it's going to dry clearer. So I'm just going to give it just this wash. It's not going to be as heavy as what you're thinking. But I want to come up on different ways so that it can, the, details can be captured, if that makes sense. And I'm okay if some areas are more, you know, heavier in the streak, but I do want them to be, you know, evened out. Okay, so I am going to let that dry. Matter of fact, I'm going to grab my heat tool so that I can dry that so that I can see what that's going to look like. And it's just going to add a little bit of shimmer when it comes to this. Okay. So that is perfect. You can see it just lightened it enough just to give a little bit um, of what we needed. Now I'm going to come in with my pokey tool because there's always something that I forget to do. And what I want to do is I want to pick up this little tiny area here and you'll see why. I just need a section of it picked up, not the whole section. All right, and that. Okay. So I'm going to work on my hardware here. So what I want first are my jump rings, and I want to get those set in place. So again, with a jump ring, they're very simple. Um, and these, we're not doing any other condition, but you never want to separate them this way. You want to twist it so that it opens up sideways. So hopefully you can see that. And then I'm going to put it through the holes here. And then you're going to do the same thing to close it. Again, move them back and then just let them be closed like that. Now, this is why I needed these areas lifted up because I need to hook them onto that area. Now, I'm going to glue this area back down, but I just needed those rings in place. And there we go. That's 
that's all I needed. So now we're just going to take a little bit of a dab of glue and we're going to put that down. And now that's really going to secure these pieces back in there, that, that metal piece. There we go. Memories. And I do like that that's kept a little bit darker. All right, so I'm going to save the brad just for a little bit. Okay. Now we are going to have fun. We are going to take all of our greens and we are just going to have fun creating our scene here. And this is all we are going to do. We are just going to embellish and add and take our placements where we want them. So I know I want that one to go like that. I'm going to want that to come up like that. This I'm going to have sitting behind that larger one. And the reason being is because this has a great curve and I'm going to hide it in behind that piece because I want it to continue to curve in. All right. I want this to continue up along this line. And again, I'm going to hide it in behind another area. I now also got my darker pieces so I want to make sure I get those intertwined as well. So this here I'm gonna have this come off like that. And again you're just you're just layering. Don't don't stress. Just do that placement, you know, have fun with it. I'm placing these around, I love this. I, I think this is a lot of fun. Um, brings out a lot of differences in the pieces. And just by adding that dark, I'm, I'm pulling it out. I'm adding, you know, some more levels to this. Now to break up that large green, I want to add just one of these smaller ones. And again, I'm just going to tuck these in behind a leaf. Just going to find that right leaf, though. So that, again, I'm ab able to mask what this looks like. And I'm going to place that one right on top of that. I'm going to come down here and I want to add a dark one there. Again, just tucking this behind and letting it come through. Now I want to look at a lot of these have a curve that's going this way. So that's why I have this heavy focus of this coming out this way. which I like that. I just think stuff, items like this, they just add so much dimension, um, so much character when you're adding, you know, all of these bits. It's a different element. Okay, so I have that. Now, let's see here, we want to go, and I don't want to use the reverse. All right, so this one, even though it's curved a different way, I like the look that I'm getting. 
by having that go like that, which then allows me to pull this one in to make that continue off that arc. So I'm hoping that this makes sense. With what I'm saying, I just need to make sure I got glue down on that. Because <laughs> I'm kind of pushing things in. Um, I'm going to add another branch here off of that. So now, even though they're all curving that way, I was able to create this side piece that's going to come up. Now here, I'm going to add, but I do want my focus of the greeneries to come from the one side. And I've got that there. And I'm going to want that one just to sit there. And then we'll see if we need more greens just to fill in. Okay. So let's see, because what I can do, I'm going to lift that one up, and I do want some green right here, just to break that up, and then I'm going to take a smaller green and put that right there. And we'll put that just like that. All right, and I think, I think we're good with the greens. So that is that so far. I'm just, you have to, um, you know, have fun with this. Don't, we have no stress. All right, so now before I get the flowers added on, I'm going to get these pieces added. So these are hinges. Now you could actually get these hinges to work, you know, if you wanted to. Um, but I'm actually just going to place these here because they will bend. So if you cut this, you can actually have this open. I'm not looking for that to do that. I mean, you could have a beautiful, 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 beautiful interactive card. Not looking um, to create that. All right, so I have that. And I'm not going to worry about this side because I've got so many greeneries. This one, you can see that. So I wanted that to come out just a little bit. Now, for your mechanism... I am going to put a very small amount of glue, and I'm going to need my tweezers for this. And this is your mechanism. So this is going to spin. And you'll see that in one second. What I need to know and make sure is where this is going. So I'm going to place that right there. And then I'm going to grab my pokey tool and I'm going to punch a hole. And I'm going to come through the other side. I'm going to grab my brad and this piece here. So I will have just a little bit of interaction. And you know what? That's too big. So I need a smaller one. So you need really petite ones. for that piece. So these are my really small ones. It's a different color, but that's okay. We are going to go with it. And I'm going to poke that through there. There we go. Yeah, so you need a really small bread to do this. And then I'm going to put that through there. And 
and I'm going to press down the sides, but I don't want to make it too tight. Just enough to make it flat, but I want this to be able to turn, which it can, because where that's going to go is right here. So I'm going to take my tweezers and just bend that up a little bit so that this can just sit right in there just to give the illusion of that okay all right now you can see I'm not using all the pieces now we can have just some awesome fun with our flowers and we can just have fun placing them place them wherever you would want so I'm gonna do a cluster of three here so I'm gonna put a pink and I want to put a yellow and a blue and that's how you we can put these flowers um, and again look for areas that just don't look right like this I definitely want to have a cluster of five and I'm looking at that cluster of five because I only have one shade of the greens so this will help to block those up and just give a little bit of difference so your eyes gonna be focused on those greens here I'm gonna do another cluster of three You can layer these, you know, you can take these small little bits and put them on top of that if you're looking to embellish that way. Um, again, so many possibilities. I am going to put just a dab of glue right there. And hold that down. I'm going to put a flower right there. All right, so let's look at, we're gonna put a big flower here. I'm actually gonna put three here. And just filling this up. Put one there, put one here, here, and here. We're going to put that in there. And we'll put that one there. And let's put a big blue one right there. So I think I have enough flowers down here. Let's put another cluster of three. I think I'll just put one here. I'm using my wax pencil 
to pick up. So this is great for not only sequins and gems, um, but for, as you can see, papers. And I think here I'm going to put... Going to extend out a really huge cluster. Okay, so those are our clusters. I'm gonna get, just get these out of my way. All right, now I'm going to put this on my standard A2 size card base because I don't want to, now what I'm actually going to do, because this is there, I don't want that in case that moves to cut into my my cardstock down below. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to cover it with some washi tape lightly, not really pressing down because then this will still be able to move, but it's going to create that barrier. And again, if I take my tweezers, it will be able to move still. I'm just going to add my glue. It is, the brad is raised a little bit, but it's, for me, it's not um, necessary to use double-sided foam, but you can certainly, certainly do that if you want. I'm just going to push down to make sure that is secured. Okay. Now, what I'm going to add are some of these sparkling jewels. They are called Fairy Jewels, and they're by Open Studio. Now, what I am going to need is a pokey tool so that I can get in there, pick these up, and place those down. Now, if you've got Nouveau Drops, you could certainly use those. Um, you know, please use whatever you have. I just think they added that perfect touch because of the silver. It's actually going to pull out those silver rings, jump rings that I used. I do better if I use my craft knife. Be careful that you don't cut yourself because, yes, you guys know I'm a klutz. These are very easy. Um, to pick off of this plastic sheet. I just make it look more difficult. But this is, yet again, just another beautiful, beautiful project. I'm going to turn that just so that I can get to these other flowers. This is like watching paint dry, I know. But I am almost done. Now, I'm really pressing down on these just to make sure that they're sticking. I don't want any of these to fall off. And I haven't had any fall off yet. So I guess that's the good thing. Last one. Okay. And that is our piece. And you see just that little bit of shimmer that's going on when we lighten that. And then that offset that we have going on there just looks like a shadow that's going on there, which I think is great and adds just even more dimension to this. So as always, I do hope you enjoyed this project. I know it took a while, so I do apologize, but I do like to do um, tutorials like this so that you get you know, the full explanation, you know, sometimes watching a tutorial at mock speed, you know, you tend to miss something. So, or I miss something as I'm going through it. So, 
Um, again, I do hope you enjoyed this. Remember, this is the Spellbinders Amazing Paper Grace Club Kit of the Month, and this is for May, and it is called a Mini 3D Vignette Garden Gate. So lots and lots of possibilities on this. I am seeing this for a front of a journal. I'm just saying. Um, so again, as always, everything will be linked down below in the video description along with their shop and of course more inspiration from their gallery and also the cardstock colors that I used. I am using the Spellbinders new um, cardstock that has been released recently and it is wonderful. So I encourage you to check that out if you're on the market for some cardstock um, or looking to find a good brand. If you have any questions, make sure you leave those down below and I will get back to you as soon as I can. Continue to smile, continue to laugh, but most of all, always remember what's most important for me. Always be creative. Till next time, guys. Take care.